this picture I got on my screen here. I'm sure I think this was Kingsbury um, last summer. I took this one. So nice little scene, few reflections in the water. So I think I'm gonna have a go at this one today. But let's have a look at the materials first. I've been having problems with the sun coming through the ceiling here. So I've had to basically screw a tablecloth to keep the sun out. I'm sure my tomato plants here have, have loved the uh, the sun, but um. It's just a bit too much for me, but uh, anyway, let's just have a quick look at the materials. These are the colours. We've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, pines grey, alizarin crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, light red. This is my tea towel that I use to wipe the hake brush on to get a lot of the uh, excess water off. This is the hake in question. It's the large Ron Ranson, 45ml. Um, the other main brush is not that one, it's the number three rigger. I also use these little cards here for scraping out rocks and bits and pieces. Uh, these are the colours themselves, Cotman watercolours. They're only student quality but they work for me. I just squeeze them onto the palette, let them dry overnight, then just use them like large pans. Got my water jar there with a nice lip on it. I can take a, some of the excess water off the brush. It's a uh, 15 by 11 Fabriano watercolour paper. Over there, I've got my air dryer. So, one last look at the uh, photograph and then let's, uh, let's get cracking. So, I'm just starting with the large hike and just clear water. Clean water all over the page. A little bit more, and that will let the background soften off and also stop the paper from crinkling. You can pre stretch it before you start, but I don't, I don't bother personally, it's just personal choice. Um, not much of a sky, so I'm not going to worry too much about what's going on above. This is just raw sienna, a uh, little bit of zoom crimson in there. Give it a bit of bump and just bring that all the way down to the bottom. So that bit of crimson just gives it a bit of colour there. Bring that down. Clean the brush. Let's go into our blue, maybe a touch of red. And just sweep that in. Something like that. Don't get, don't overdo it, just a couple of strokes and then leave it. Um, there's a, obviously a blue beam reflected into the water below, so I'll leave it at that for the time being. There's a house, I can see a house in the distance, but I'm going to bother with that, I'm just going to stick to the natural stuff. All the stuff that God made. So, raw sienna, a bit of light red, raw sienna again. And let's start somewhere up there. Popping in these sort of um, almost golden coloured trees. And I'm just going to just whiz around the palette, just, just trying to vary that colour so it's just not the same all the way through so it looks a bit bland. Now the paper's still wet so I can pull these down, pull the reflection straight down. Now the advantage of that is you've got the colour on your brush, if you did it afterwards you've got to mess about getting the same colour again. It's a bit of a pain. This is lemon yellow. And again, just putting it down while I'm putting it in. Just a touch of uh, ultramarine. You can see, oh, it's just getting a bit more varied now. Keeps it interesting. Now further on this right hand side, it's slightly closer to us and it's like a more dark, richer green, so I don't bother cleaning the brush, just lemon yellow, a bit of Payne's grey, and I want this stronger. Now as the paper's continuously drying, it'll go on thicker and stronger and you'll have sharper edges. Let's see, so that, that's, that's contrasting nicely against the background, it's not dry yet, but it's good enough. 
again, pulling down that reflection while I've got the paint, that coloured paint on the brush. Sorry for doing it afterwards. A bit more paint grey. And I'm just using the corner of the brush just to try and get natural shapes. And just pulling that down. And you can see because the paper's still wet, there's no hard edges, it's still nice and soft, like that's all nice and soft as well. Uh, I'm going to go a bit of light red just to make it a bit different on this side. So I'll just pull that down. A bit of lemon yellow, paint's grey again, just to fill in that gap there. And just a little bit empty. That'll do for that. What we could do, if you want, use your fingernail, just uh, suggest few branches, twigs, try not to overdo it and then if you put them down, put down those reflections as well, it just helps make that water even more realistic. Now the paper has stretched a little bit, you can see how it's coming away from the board from the stretch, so I'm just going to unclip it and pull it tight again so that it's flat against this board. It's just a piece of 9mm plywood I fixed the paper to. Nice and solid. Hang on, I'll just, uh, I'll just enlarge the photo on the computer by mistake. I'm back, back to normal now. Right then, so that's much of the background done. Now we're coming forward now, so it's starting to dry. I'm not going to bother using the air dryer yet. Um, now there's a bit of land now on the left hand side. So I'm just going to clean the brush. I don't want too much water on it. And these are fairly light colours now. So I'm just going raw sienna. Lemon yellow. Let's see what that looks like. It's going right up to there. See, starting to dry now this paper so it's coming up quite nicely so the lighter areas on the top there just vary that bit of ultramarine just to vary that green a bit and then I'll just bring that further over it's coming down to about there so again just using the corner of the brush this wants to be just a little bit higher So I'm just trying to sort of slope it down, it's not all the same level across. Now the bit that's underneath is in shadow. So I'm just going to put that in a bit darker. And then pull down those reflections while I've got the colour on the brush. The also marine. Lemon yellow, pines grey. And then sort of behind there, we've got some, uh, actually the trees are in the, uh, so there's actually a tree there. I'm going to put a tree in this bit here, in the foreground section, so I'm just dipping the very tip in the paint, just to loosen it up, it's going a bit dry and I'm looking for the tree trunk colour, so I'm just going burnt umber, ultramarine and then if we can imagine we've got a tree just at the back of these and that's going to go right off the top of the paper you can do this with the, uh, the rigger if you like, but um, I find it quicker with the Hike. Just dip the tip again into the water just to loosen it up, loosen the paint up. If it's not coming off the brush very well, just, just the very tip. And I'm going to stick another one next to me. Something like that. And then if we just go, just give that green and then just fairly dry brush, just suggesting a bit of. Over it down in the tree, and then what I'm going to do burnt umber and just put a bit of 
weeds, grass, whatever it is in front of that. Just to hide the base of those trunks. Get the reflections. Then moving over to this side again. Let's clean the brush, it's gone a bit muddy. Take the excess water off on the towel. So we've got a nice clean damp hake with not too much water on. Uh, I'm going like this and I've got water swilling all around the tray. Um, I know it's difficult when you first start. I had terrible trouble with the hike. I didn't think I was going to get used to it. Just so much water, all the colours are diluted. You never seem to get anywhere. And just finishing off in this bottom corner. Just bringing it over today. I don't want to encroach too much on the reflections. I'm just sort of twisting the brush around just to get a variation on the shapes. Oh, I mean, a bit of pain's grey to darken it all. A bit of light, light red there. We've got some sort of tall. Tall reeds. Nice little red flowers on the end. See, so I'm just using a very corner of the brush. Just a little, little faintness of touch. Getting the reflections. Very slightly stretched. So I'm just going to pull that, make sure that's tight, and then I think that's still we might do. Is then paint the still wet paint. So I'm just going to put my name in by scratching it in with a card, and I think I'll call that one done. So let's have a closer look at it. So this is what the painting looks like. So if we have a quick look at the photograph, you see I've I've not moved the composition around really. I've kept everything in its place. Really changes the position of these couple of trees in the foreground. Um, there were there were some bit further back. To be honest, I just I forgot to put them in. See in the photo, not much sky going on. So I didn't really muddy too much. Horizon line's pretty high, two thirds of the way up, so I didn't really worry too much about the sky and the clouds and all that. Um, I didn't bother putting that out in either, and you can see the, the distant trees. I just put in using the corner of the hake and just try to vary it slightly using raw sienna, reds, blues as we've gone along. The trees on the right hand side are a little bit closer. I've used the new finger now just to suggest a few trunks and branches, reflecting them down into the water area, really, just to try and make the water look more realistic, coupled with the reflection of the foliage, doesn't look too bad. Use the hake again, just to put in these big tree branches, and then just use a dry brush, corner of the brush, just to put in the foliage area. Don't block it all in, leave some gaps there for the birds to fly through. Various greens and browns, mickle powder, bank here on the left hand side, pulling down the reflections as I went along. Again use the hike, you could use the number three rigged if you want just to put these these reeds. Again reflecting them down just to try and make the water look more realistic. Into this right hand foreground. Just use the corner of the hike with a little bit of red just to create these these flower heads on these reeds there.
So obviously use these photos for reference. You don't you know, paint in every bit of blade and grass and every twig and branch that you see. You're just creating your own personal impression of the scene. Well thanks for watching, I hope you like that. Keep practicing, any questions please ask and I'll see you again soon.